I haven't met one Collingwood supporter that's been negative. It surprised me because I don't think they know the full story. A lot of them don't know the full story, but nonetheless, they're all prepared to uh, those that I do have contact with, just acknowledge the fact that I spent 12 good years at, 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 the, at the Collingwood Football Club. Most wish me all the best at the new club, albeit with a follow-up like, why Carlton? I've coached enough against my old teams to know that you, it's not about you. It cannot be about you, it's got to be about getting it right. Right now, it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's just another game. But I th I'm sure the media will make more out of it than, than what it should be, but that's what the media are there for, to, to, to build a, Not that that game will need building up, I wouldn't have thought anyway, Colin would come. If, if I draw the attention and it helps my team, so be it. I am not silly enough to suspect that when we walk onto the ground at the MCG in round two, that there's not going to be a little bit of banter between the supporters and them to me. I'm just dreading it. I'll just be glad for it to be over, to tell the truth, because. That's all everybody talks about, and um, I just want it to be to be done and over. I'd like to go and hide away somewhere. Oh, I've heard Mick say before he doesn't want to be a focus on on Mick versus Collingwood, or Mick versus Nathan Buckley. It's it's about the uh, the 22 that will run out there on that Sunday afternoon, and um, you know it's another game for four points, obviously. But obviously, games against Collingwood and you know Essendon and Richmond are obviously big games, traditionally big games at the G. So. Um, Obviously, it's going to be a massive one. I suppose there'll probably be 90,000 there, and um, yeah, it'll be a massive build-up. So can't wait to uh, to get stuck in around two. Rob Wiley, I got to know in 1979 when he was recruited to Richmond. Um, he got injured that year. I got injured that year. We did rehab together. The following year, we both played in the 80 Premiership. And we just had a very good understanding of one another. Totally different backgrounds, absolutely totally different backgrounds. His father was a copper. I'm not saying mine was a crim, <laughs> but my father was uh, uh, a, a labourer. And, uh, you know, we went to West and Robbie's from Perth, so we had different contrasts there. He, he married a young girl called Marcia, who her and Nanette got on extremely well. And unfortunately, Marcia passed away several years ago. But um, Ma Nanette took Marcia under her wing, and which almost that also cemented our bond. I reckon friendships about you don't have to live in the same place, you don't have to contact every day. Friendship, you pick up the phone, and it's like yesterday you spoke to the bloke. Sometimes you just form relationships with people, you know, as soon as you meet them. And uh, Mick was very friendly. Him and his wife Nanette uh, looked after me, being my first year from from Perth, West Australia, playing at, uh, at Richmond. Had me around for a meal and uh, and obviously, you know, we just grew from there. And uh, later on in a couple of years when I got married, um, my wife, Marcia, became a really good friend with Nanette. So the Malthouses and Wileys uh, just clicked, I suppose, right from the start. And uh, and here we are today. To accept this job, one of the, one of the things I said was, I, I knew I'm gonna have Rob Wiley on board and I want him on board and that was because I trust him. And I know his football brain, he's got a very good football brain, Extreme, gets on extremely well with people. Anyone who's lost, lost his beloved wife, raised his three girls with, a, with a, such a positive attitude he has, he's, there, there's real special qualities to the bloke. Uh, Mick's always liked his exercise and I've liked his exercise, so he likes to get me on the bike in there. And he's probably got me on the bike because I run more than probably ride. So, you know, he's got the edge there. And so he says, how many metres have you done? You know, and, uh, and of course he makes me say how many metres first. So he can always add a little bit more on. Best part of the altitude room is when I look at the clock and it's either said 30 or 40 minutes, but I'm the same finish because I'm going to start to grow up. And understand that I don't have to be in there. <laughs> Jeff Gartlett. Hi Jeff, 
And then you got Christy, of course. And you got Danny over there with Tommy. This is my granddaughters and grandsons and everything like that. Jeff, Jeff's got his own little boy. Mason. One year old. One year old, so he's pretty good. One year old. Changed his life. Yeah, that's pretty good, so yeah, yeah. enjoy it. Yeah. We're going to get a crash organised for you guys. We should get one here, family day, I reckon. Yeah, yeah, that's right. Thank you. Absolutely. Say hello, Jeff. Give him five. He's a great player. He's a great player. <laughs> Andrew. Well, in my family, this is Dan. And Andrew. Hey, Christy. Yeah, Danny. Yeah, I'll say, there you go. Thank you. Grandchildren. They're all over the place. Hi, Andrew. Hello. Starting at my eldest grandson, for one reason or another, he, he, he could be at kinder or where I'd go and watch him do some ball sports and there'd be all those plastic balls that roll out of this box and they'd say, now clean them up and he would go and pick up every blue ball, not knowing why he did it. So when, I, when they said to him, Pa is going to be coaching the blues, he said the navy blues. So he's like that, the navy blue. There's no question, he's navy blue. So he's dragged his mother into it and his little sister. They thought it was finished at the end of the calling. They were very disappointed. Um, a little bitter in many respects, I think, the way it finished. And uh, really done with football, really quite uh, 